wanted to just go on and, and talk about some unusual clinical presentations that we see with ringworm and some of the ways that we can kind of deal with that. Um, resistant organisms, you can sometimes see um, a case of ringworm that presents as pemphigus foliaceus and we'll talk about that in some detail. A failure to develop immunity, uh, persistent infections and uh, the, the syndrome of carry-on that I'm sure most of you have heard about. So we'll go over those one at a time and hopefully this will be helpful in those difficult cases that you've thought, hmm, don't seem to be getting to the bottom of this, you know, where am I going wrong? So resistant organisms, certainly with Grisia fulvin, we knew that, that we often needed a very broad dosage range and this was partly due to the fact that um, Grisia fulvin was very variably absorbed and we used to talk about using uh, some sort of fatty food when we were giving Grisia fulvin to help in the absorption. So if you were going at the very low end of the dose rate, it may have been that you just weren't giving a big enough dose to sort the problem out. So often we would increase the dose of Grisia fulvin when that was our drug of choice. We know also that mean inhibitory concentrations can vary between different strains of fungus. So again, one dose fits all doesn't seem to work as well in fungus as it does in bacteria. Uh, although again, in bacteria, there can be fluctuations in MICs. It seems to be a more, more apparent in, in, in dermatophytosis. Of course, some animals have aberrant immune responses. So it's not so much about the organism, but it's also about the, uh, the actual host of the organism. The animal itself doesn't seem to be able to self-cure its ringworm as, as most animals will. And uh, if you're seeing it, if you're, if you're you know, suspicious that you're doing all the right things, but you're still not able to get rid of it, then it is worth changing to a different type of drug. So maybe from itrafungal onto to binafine and, and you know use that as, as one to have at. But do look at the treatment protocol. You know, if if um, your dermatophytosis case is not clearing up, then you really need to think about well, maybe we should clip this cat up and also look at the environment. And of course by clipping the cat we remove such a high infective dose of the fungus that um, things can start to improve because we've removed all of that infection. Pemphigus foliaceus, you know, cats, uh, you will often see pemphigus foliaceus. It's, it's not a, a common condition, but it's something that you should be looking out for. And I would suggest a normal caseload, you know, you should be seeing at least one of these a year. Problem with cats is, of course, that they respond so beautifully to steroids. So we see a scabby cat coming in and we're in a rush it's very natural to reach for the steroid and quite often these cats will do a lot better. It could have been allergic, it could have been pemphigus, but they will respond to that treatment and, uh, you know, will do well. However, we do know that uh, certainly in, I think it has also been recognized in dogs with microsporin persicola, sometimes they will get um, pustules and acanthalytic cells in there that make us think this is a pemphigus foliaceous case. But actually, when we send off a fungal culture, or when we ask our pathologist to uh, perform uh, PAS on the uh, histology, then quite often fungal hyphae will be seen. In those cases, of course, don't give steroids, give uh, antifungal treatment, and these, uh, these cats will do a lot better. And just remember, in a sense, that pemphigus is a symptom, not a, a diagnosis. We know that pemphigus is caused by it for many reasons. Obviously, immune-mediated reasons. Some cats and dogs can get pemphigus because of uh, drug eruptions. Uh, occasionally, we've had dogs and cats have problems with food that has caused pemphigus. So it's something that is worth looking at. What could be the underlying cause? Is there a drug in there? Could there be a fungus there as well? So don't just decide, right, this is an immune-mediated thing. This needs lots of steroids and cyclophosphamide. Uh, it may need it may need something quite different. So well worth delving a bit deeper in those cases of pemphigus that you're seeing. Failure to develop immunity is quite interesting. We know that um, dermatophytosis, the recovery is usually associated with a cell-mediated immunity. 
um, and this is usually very long lasting we know that um, quite often people will only get ringworm once or twice in their life um, but in in the right conditions high infective doses the right sort of humidity uh, perhaps the person is immunosuppressed or, or the animal is immunosuppressed this can lead to a reinfection cattle seem to develop lifelong resistance so if they get it once they seem to do very well with it and of course we know that there is a vaccine uh, available for use in in cattle with ringworm we know that uh, in in work done in the in the human field that uh, instead some individuals instead of developing a, a cell mediated immunity response they actually develop high levels of IgG teasers and these often develop into recurrent infections they don't seem to be able to throw off that um, ringworm in the same way that uh, other people would do and we also see some individuals who have high levels of IgE and this is often seen in uh, individuals who are predisposed to allergy in the work that's been done in cats obviously not as uh, as detailed as in humans we seem to think that similar things are happening that uh, there are certainly um, certain individuals certain breeds that seem to be prone to persistent infections they don't seem to fight off the dermatophytosis quite as well they can be carriers of the dermatophytes um, and you know you can certainly see um, individuals who are related to each other also being more prone to picking up dermatophytosis certainly do look out for those long-haired cats in a situation where you do have dermatophytosis in a group of cats you don't seem to be able to clear it up it's almost certainly the long-haired cat that's acting as the reservoir of infection so look out for your Persians look out for your Himalayans so as I said I think there is a genetic component as there is in people and um, you really need to look at them seriously to get uh, to get any cattery problem under control and also in persistent infections as we mentioned previously it's always worth checking certainly on the FELV and possibly the FIV status often uh, in, in cases where I've seen where treatment isn't going well when we've checked these statuses uh, you know that there is a, a positive FELV or FIV status and and this makes the cat much more prone to keeping its infection and, and not being able to throw it off so if you have a case of ringworm if it's not going well you know do look at doing a, a viral panel and obviously if a cat is on steroid medication because you thought it was an allergic problem you have to stop that treatment carry on is mainly seen in dogs it's an over I think it's only seen in dogs it's an over exuberant response to inflammation with the development of a plaque or a nodule and and often we will look at a dog like this and we will think oh this has a a neoplasm of some description um, so when you see it it's quite often that you've taken it out as a biopsy you're expecting to see maybe that the dog has a histiocytoma and it comes back as a carrion and of course that helps you to know that there's a completely different treatment there and they do seem to respond quite well to treatment environmental control is important um, really the two products that seem to really work are enylconazole so uh, the imavirol again made by Janssen or just straightforward diluted bleach I'm a great believer in being very very thorough with hoovering um, if there if there are bags in the hoover you throw those hoover bags away um, you carry on doing this probably on a weekly basis so you're doing it very often to try and and really decrease the infective load in the house and um, washing curtains washing bedding perhaps when you feel that you've got to a certain level getting the carpets cleaned properly anything that will work to try and really clean up that environment because if you don't clear up that environment and a new kitten comes into the house several months later it's very possible that that cat can uh, develop dermatophytosis we know that uh, vaccinations certainly work very well in um, in cattle but they don't seem to work as well in other species what we find is that um, vaccines are often used in the face of an outbreak 
and they seem to improve clinical signs, the worry is that the clinician stops too early with treatment and of course you end up in a situation where uh, the cat is still infected and then goes on to reinfect other animals. So just be aware there are sort of work on vaccinations but at this point it, it's not really one that's being used in the uh, in a general practice sense.